Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening. This is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. Today is Thursday, the 14th of January, Anno Domini 2021. And tonight our psalm is the 11th Psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Lord do I take refuge, how can you say to my soul, Flee like a bird to your mountain, for behold the wicked bend the bow, they have fitted their arrow to the string, to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. The foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord in his holy temple, the Lord's in throne is in heaven. His eyes, his eyelids test the children of man. The Lord tests, tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur and scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. Lord Jesus, you came into this world to reveal to us the will of your Father and to teach us the way of everlasting life. Behold how your sacred word is denied and corrupted in these perilous days. Have mercy upon us, save us from the snares of unbelief and seductive teachings of the world, and grant us to abide in your word, that being made free from error and sin, we may be found as your disciples indeed. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And we continue with our study of St. John's Gospel, the first chapter. And this evening, our verses are 38 through 42. Now, we had the very beginning of verse 38 before, so it'll sound familiar. Turning around, Jesus saw them following. And remember, this is the two disciples that left John's side. And Jesus asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. And so they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah that is, the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. So far, the text. So, these two were standing by John the baptizer's side, and John points and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the two follow him. John is pointing to Jesus. Now, all of a sudden, they follow Jesus, and the question, of course, they ask is, Where are you staying? In other words, where can we sit and meet with you? We want to learn some more. And so Jesus says, come, follow me. We've heard those words before. And uh, basically, come and see. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the action. He doesn't just tell them. He says, let me show you. And they follow him. And so they're there till about the 10th hour. So they're there for some time. And I'm sure they're learning from him. Andrew, which is Simon Peter's brother, we know Simon Peter. Jesus actually has spoken to Simon Peter, maybe before this even, when he was out in the boat. Maybe this is the first time. We'll have to discover that a little bit later. And so Andrew takes off, and he can't help but tell Simon Peter what he found out. He says, we have found the Christ. And that's what faith does. When people realize how sinful they are, how unforgivable they are, how wretched they are, and that God in His love reaches out to us 
and touches us, pours his lifeblood out for us, gives us the credit for his perfection, and calls us forgiven, calls us his children, saves us from ourselves and from the world. When that happens, when you realize how wretched you are, then all of a sudden you can't help but share it with people. And isn't it interesting when you find a great restaurant, well, maybe not so much right now in the middle of the pandemic, but it's only been 10 months, and we treat it as if it's been longer than that. And I know any time our personal freedoms are taken away from us, we feel like we're in captivity forever. But remember the days when you went to a great restaurant and you wanted to tell all your friends about it. I found this place, they have incredible sandwiches or whatever. And you go and you tell them. How much more when you realize how unforgiven in the world you are. How you deserve nothing but God's wrath and hot displeasure. And yet he turns around and he says, I love you enough to send my son into the world. And Jesus teaches them, and all of a sudden they're excited. Now remember, and this is important, remember that the average believer of that day, believer in messianic prophecy, in the coming of the Messiah, were Zionists. So what was their expectation for what Jesus would do? What did they believe that the Messiah would do? Well, you probably have already answered it. They believed the Messiah came to deliver Israel out of captivity, out from underneath the hand of the Romans and every other worldly authority, to make them the great nation they once were, to make them, again, version 2.0 of Solomon's kingdom, where they were the power at large, the land of milk and honey, the land where everything would be under their control. And so, as a Zionist, they believe in the restoration of of course, uh, Israel, the Jewish temple, and guess what had been happening? Now remember when John came, there has been between 450 and 500 years of silence. God hadn't spoken through a prophet. And usually when things got silent, God would send a prophet, and when the people were in captivity, when Israel was in captivity, they'd repent, because that'd be the message of the prophet. Repent, and then Israel would be freed from bondage and restored back to its own land. Now the Romans had come into their land, and they were in a form of bondage. Occupation always feels like a form of bondage. And so the people went out to see John, because what? He was the voice of one crying in the wilderness, like the prophet of old. He was literally the last Old Testament prophet. And what was his message? Repent. Turn and be saved. Be baptized for the remission of sin. John's message was one of repentance, the same way Elijah spoke. And so their understanding was, this was the ushering in of a new kingdom. Most likely they believed it was going to be an earthly kingdom. That the Messiah would come to lead them out of bondage into their rightful place of the land of milk and honey, the promised land. And so when Andrew went to tell Peter about Jesus, what might have he said? we found the Messiah. Well, what does that mean to you and me? We understand the Messiah as the one who went to the cross, who spilled his blood to die for our sins. But what have they understood it that way? Most likely not. They would have been thinking of a maybe a warrior king. Someone who would kick back and kick out all those people that oppressed them. And so, when those words show up, if you were going to be part of God's army, think about what you would pick up when you go to see the Messiah. You grab your sword, grab a shield if you have one, all of a sudden showing up armed and ready to fight. But the message of Jesus, as we hear time and time again, is not one of hostility. Not towards you and me, not towards us, but one towards him, that they would be hostile to him, that we might have peace with God. His message was one of peace, peace with God. Now, did, did he tell people to be wimps? No. When you face an adversary and you don't do what the world does, that takes a lot more guts than to respond like kind. 
hand for hand, knife for knife, gun for gun. It takes a lot more to stand there, but there does come a time when, when people have to stand up for those who can't defend themselves. And God does allow that. And so we're not asking you to be footstools for people, but we're not asking you to seek out violence either. Nor is Jesus. Jesus came to deal with the violence and deal with the hostility that would be thrown at him by not exchanging it with like kind. The day will come when he returns in glory and he puts an end to all things. Then judgment will come, but not yet. Lord, we pray you come quickly, though. And so, when Andrew goes and tells Peter, what do you think Peter was thinking? Well, all the way through Scripture, we see that Peter thinks he's going to restore the kingdom. Is it now time? Even in the Ascension, we see that. Is it time now? And so, they still don't quite get it. But they do have the Messiah present. They understand who he is. Which is not why he has come. That will unfold in those things coming up. But not yet. That's all I have for you tonight. Let's pray. Dearly Father, we thank you that your plan far exceeds anything we could ever come up with. And yet we still lean to our own understanding and falter at doing what is right. Help us to be strong. And help us to take care of the least among us that you may use us as tools to watch over everyone in need, especially those that are elderly and those that are yet unborn. Protect us, protect them, and be with those who have special needs. Be with those who are suffering under the hand of this COVID virus. Protect them and keep them in your strength. And according to your will, heal them. Be with all those that are suffering from any type of heart issue, medication issues that they might be strengthened, their doctors may be given wisdom to overcome that that they're facing. Be with those who are facing cancer, that they may find your comfort, and according to your good and gracious will, heal them, and let them know that regardless of what occurs, you are ever with them and in control. All these things and so much more as you know we need, we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great night in the Lord.